So we've spoken a little bit about blocks and how they really are the, the key to success in these outliner network note-taking approaches. But what are the things that we can do with blocks? Well, first of all, we can just write text. And for those of you who like, you know, have many things in one unit, you can use soft line breaks. So this is an example. And then if you say shift enter of many thoughts in one block. Okay, so that's just a soft line break. And if I wanted to break that apart, I could just enter there and enter there. But yeah, just some of the writing functionality for those of you who might be writing a little bit more long form. What are some of the other things we can do? We can use, we can upload images, PDFs, we can use links, uh, we can embed YouTube videos, a whole bunch of things. So one of the key things to learn is this forward slash key which allows you to enter a whole bunch of things here. We're going to get into page references and block references just now. But um, here, if, and this is in the desktop app, I can upload an asset. So one thing which I've been researching is software architecture patterns. And there we go. I've now got a PDF uploaded to my database. I can also take images. So I am researching some things to buy for my mom for her birthday and one of those things is an amber necklace and these are all terrible. This one is nice, sort of. Let me take a picture of that and then I can paste that into, um, into Logsy2. So I've now pasted an image. Now what is happening when I'm uploading images and assets to Logseq? If I go to my first database folder that we have saved my files, I can see there that Logseq has added this new folder called assets. And this is where it's storing all the information that I've included in my database or uploaded to my database. So if I go into assets, I can see there, there's the PDF and there is the picture of the amber necklace. And the great thing now is that I don't have to think about where I'm storing the information in order to retrieve it. I can just find it using my Logseq database. Okay, so I can also use links to websites. So let me, if I use that forward slash key, if I say link, maybe I can say uh, once, one stuttering line.com personal website and boom, there I can go to one stuttering mine.com. I can also embed YouTube videos. So if I go to YouTube, okay, so I'm going to take this video here and I'm, I'm really hoping that this and I'm going to embed a YouTube video. So I'm just going to, I can just start typing YouTube and it will come up. There we go. And I just literally paste that link there and but a boom, I can paste or embed videos in Logseq and then, you know, hypothetically take notes underneath that if I was using it for studying purposes or yeah, it's a really cool functionality. Let's scrap all of this though. So, so those are all the things that Logseq allows me to enter in blocks, but there's tons more. If you open up this menu and just scroll down there, you can see there's a lot of functionality, which I'll get to a little bit later. Some of them, but not all of them. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering like, what the heck, surely I can't just use a journal page and no journal pages, whilst they are great, you need to add pages in order to like start adding links. And we'll get to links just now, but what is a page? And, and this is where it becomes very much up to how you use Logseq. I like to think about pages from a starting point as like nodes in your brain, things that like you can connect thoughts to. So recipes, ha, huh. if I enter something and it's a recipe that, would, that might be linked to the recipe page or mom thinking about like, you know, my mom's birthday or whatever, it might be linked around the page mom. So I can use pages to input information or I could just use it as like a way to link thoughts in my daily journal. Okay, so let's get into that. So again, I've opened up my database file on my PC alongside Logseq on the right. And there are a couple of ways to create a page, but let's use the search bar functionality there. So if I click there and I say search or create a page, say now I want to write um, about mom. Mom is one of those people that I might refer to a lot. And there's a new page, mom. So what has happened now? Nothing just yet. 
it hasn't created a file for mom in my database yet, but that's just because that page is empty. If I add some information here, um, my mother, just for example, you can see now that the file has been created here. And if I were to open that um, with another application, I've opened it with VS Code. You can use Notepad or anything on your computer and you can just see there that it's the exact same file. Now, if I update it here, it will update there, but that's a whole nother story, so let's not worry about that. So I'm just gonna close that. And this has now created a page. So now I've just opened Logseek completely and I can enter blocks on this page too. As I've entered my mother, I can say another, another random block. So if I go back to my journal, and I can just do that by going to that page there, home. So you can see that I can enter these blocks anywhere in my journal, in my pages. And the journal is actually just a different type of page, which is date centric. So if I go to my folder again, if I open it up here, you can see journals get their own folder and pages get another folder. So the journal really is just a special type of page. Now, I can enter this information, but how am I gonna find any, in, any information that I put into my database? Because it's just text at the moment, and although the search is good, there's no structure to this. This is where linking comes in, and that is your bi-directional links. And we're gonna get into that in the next video, adding structure to your nodes through bi-directional links.